Welcome to Espresso Jams, short, concentrated, delicious conversations about business, life, and more. And now, here's your host, Joe Max. Hello. Welcome to another episode of Espresso Jams. And I am here today with Linda Selner Vasquez, and she is a certified coach and a, a money mindset mentor. Did I get that right? Linda? Yes, you did. And welcome to the show. Welcome to the oh, show. Oh, thank you for having, having me. My pleasure. It's great to have you here. As a, we got talking about um, money, we got talking about mindsets, and we got talking about your thoughts on money, because thoughts are so important. Thoughts are things. And that is Linda's specialty as a money mindset mentor. Three M's, got to get that down. Um, and we got talking about archetypes. And that's where I said, what's an archetype? So Linda, could you explain real quickly what an archetype is? I sure can. An archetype is a pattern of thought. And it is comes from um, kind of a universal mind that everybody has access to. But archetypes are impersonal because everyone has access to them and they also are personal because we have certain archetypes running through us. So like um, an example is a hermit is a form of an archetype and they have a certain kind of behavior. And so it affects their business, where they live, their vacations and everything they do. And each of us has a set of archetypes that are in our unconscious mind. And often when we have conscious thoughts of wanting to have certain goals, but we have unconscious thoughts that are fighting those goals, we go into conflict and often the unconscious wins. And so understanding the archetypes gives us more awareness of what patterns are going through our lives and why. Okay, and we talked about eight types of archetypes, of money archetypes. Is that right? Yes, that is correct. Okay, so could you give us an example or two of a money archetype? Sure. So there are many archetypes. However, um, there are eight common money archetypes and what's important is to know your top three so as an example of an archetype is a nurturer and we can see this especially um, this time with the doctors and the nurses in the healing professions they are givers and they do and do for people and that is a beautiful trait, but often they don't do for themselves. Mm. And so an example of a nurture in business would be someone who tends to charge low for their services, gives them away, and feels very uncomfortable charging more. When they understand this pattern going through them, they can realize in the group of people they help, they can include themselves. So you mentioned that you, it's important to know your top three. Might an individual have more than one archetype? Yes. In, in the money, there are eight that run through us all. But the top three has the most impact on our lives. And the top one has the most impact. Has the most. So the top one is dominant. The next two would be like the second level. And then you've got the other five. Yes. Okay. Could I have a different, would a different archetype become dominant in a different situation? Um, we, the more awareness we have, um, the more we can gain access to it. And so um, Let's say you have a connector that is a money archetype. These are people who love to network. They go in um, different places. So when they're in a networking situation, that archetype might come out more. Does, okay. does that answer your yes, question? Yes, that does. So that one becomes more dominant. Whereas if they're taking a course at school, 
their connector would be less uh, visible because they're more of a follower learner than a than than in charge networker connector person. Right, and the connector is my lowest. So when I go into a networking, I freeze. I go in the corner, and I never understood <laughs> why. I because I'm not that shy. But I, that's my lowest. So it doesn't mean I can't connect. It just means it's painful for me. Okay. I, I think there are some people who can identify with that. And um, I certainly know some people who have connector way up high, one of the top three for sure. And I'm sure we all do. If we know the archetypes, I think we'd be able to start looking at the friends that we know and family and be able to say, oh, they're I kind of identify it a little bit, not not at your level, but you know, a little bit. And you know, you brought up an excellent point. Think of your clients and your customers. Now, yes, you'd be guessing, but there are some certain traits that could come through and would help people relate more to their customers because they would see a different archetype coming up and they could talk in more of that language that sounds so important for for salespeople, for anyone in business who is selling something or trying to convince people to buy um yeah talking about their product their service that's right that's great so how could i find out what my archetypes are or anyone listening how could we find out well i offer a free quiz and it is a series of questions and that you answer them and then you tally them up and it'll give you your eight archetypes in order of priority so you'll see your first three and then once that is taken i offer a uh, free um descri brief descriptions of each of the archetypes and then if you want to dive deeper i have a, a complimentary 30-minute session on your uh, top archetype and how it's operating in your life and in your business okay and wow. so that's what they um, would help them and right there would help them start shifting their mindset so there's mindset. the link right right below where we're talking here you're going to have that's the link to the free assessment to the free quiz so now that i know my archetypes what is that going to do for me it's going to bring your unconscious to your conscious. And so you'll understand why you're doing what you're doing. As I mentioned before, sometimes we have conscious goals that don't get done because our unconscious is doing something opposite. When you confuse the two and understand what's happening, you have more likelihood to reach your goals. So if I use uh, 10 percent of my brain and my consciousness and 90 percent is my unconscious i don't want my conscious brain fighting against the unconscious it sounds like an unfair fight to me it is <laughs> you've got that right <laughs> great yeah we don't want that so i would encourage I would everyone encourage listening everyone to listen. take that free quiz it's free probably take you i don't know how many minutes it takes i'm going to take it it's how many minutes is it, it going to take? It's 10 to 15 minutes. I can do that. I will do that. Great. And Linda, how can people, folks, get in touch with you? Um, let's say if they don't want to take the quiz, they want to talk with you first, communicate with you. What's the best way to get in contact with you? Uh, my email is brandingyourpassion at gmail.com. So that's brandingyourpassion at gmail.com. Perfect. And... Um, well, I, I hope everyone listening takes the quiz because it, it does sound important. You don't want to fight against your unconscious, folks. <laughs> Very good. Linda, this has been a great conversation. I have learned so much. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. And have a good day. Have a good rest of the week. Thank you. You too. Bye, everyone.